Hey lovelies, oh my goodness, it's been a while. How are you doing? Oh my, I can't believe I am back. Yes, I'm back for another season of Stella Damas' Diaries. It's exciting and I know it's been a long time since you've seen me here on Diaries, but I can explain, okay guys, I can explain. I've been doing a lot of things. I created two podcasts, excuse my African and Daily Dose. I created a platform for actors called An Actor's Playhouse. I created another platform called Soja in Red Lipstick. I have um, one season of my television show called An African Girl Abroad. It's been crazy, but I'm not going to bore you with all of that. I'm just happy and glad that I'm back. Okay, so today I want to talk about something very personal. Um, I have a blog. You guys know I have a blog, StellaDamasesBlog.com. And in my blog, one of my blogs, I wrote something. I titled it Dating My Abuser. And it was so controversial, oh my gosh. When I wrote that, I think that was the highest number of readers that I got in my blogs, because it was crazy. Every day I was receiving like three to four different emails from women who didn't even realize that they were being abused in their relationships. It was crazy. And the thing is, it wasn't about a physical abuse when, when I wrote my story. It was more of a psychological abuse that was um, brought by verbal abuse. A lot of people don't know that even without the bruising, you can be abused in your relationship. And it can happen to anybody because someone, some lady wrote to me and she said, I can't believe that someone like you, a star like you, a celebrity like you, you know, would have someone abusing you. And I'm like, it happens to anybody, educated, non-educated, poor, rich, you know, old, young, it can happen to anyone. And a lot of women don't realize when they're even being abused, which is the issue that we're having because there was an incident that happened and I was talking to someone about it and she was like, oh no, that's not abuse. I'm like, no, it is. The fact that your partner or your spouse keeps you in a constant state of fear based on what he says to you, that is abuse. It's an abuse of your, of your state of mind, an abuse of yourself, an abuse of your rights. When someone keeps threatening you or keeps making you feel like you can't live without a certain thing or you can't live without him or if you do something, he would do something else to you, that is abuse, you know, and everyone has to sit back and, and look at the relationships that they have to, to know if you know, things are the way they're supposed to be. It's, it is not until someone hits you that you would realize that you're being abused and it's toxic. I, I can tell you that for sure because I went through it. It was a toxic relationship. I lost a lot of weight. I was very unhappy. I was not performing properly. All the work that I was doing was not at the level that I wanted it to be because I was not happy. I wasn't myself. I wasn't productive anymore because my state of mind was done. It was crazy, but I was too ashamed to say to people or to come out there and say something because of course you know what the backlash would have been. And this happened when I was in Africa and there <laughs> it's a totally different ball game when it comes to abuse. You know, when especially when it's not physical. You know, it could be sexual, it could be psychological, it could be anything. So I guess I just wanted to bring it up again because I know how um, sensitive this topic can be. I know how um, afraid a lot of women are. A lot of people are in a, in, a, in a marriage and they're afraid, they're scared of even saying anything to family members because in their heads nobody would understand but believe me people are beginning to wake up. People will understand and you have a right to say something. You have a right to save yourself from being mentally abused because guess what? It affects you in the long run. And you know, where we come from in Africa, we're not really big on seeing therapists or counselors or psychologists, we are not. So we live with that and it affects every other thing we do. Even if we leave that relationship and we don't fix that mental issue, we take it into the next relationship and we keep having to deal with the same kind of guys. And then we say, oh, it's their fault, but we don't realize that we attract the same kind of men when we don't fix the issues that we've been dealing with because of what someone else had done. So, and the thing is, it's not just who you're dating. It could be your husband. Most of the time, it happens in the family. It happens with different people. There are different types of abuse. So I'm like, look, there's nothing to be ashamed of. There are so many people out there who are willing to help. I wrote it in my blog. You might want to go there and see all the resources that I have. I've also sent messages to a lot of people. So if you're still out there, 
and you're having issues with abuse, whether it's physical, sexual, mental, psychological, whatever it is, please, please send me an email. The email address will be on your screen. Send me an email and I will send the right number to you, the kind of person you should call wherever you are. There are tons of websites that you can go to that will tell you what to do, how to get help, how to save yourself, maybe your kids if you have any, but it is a dangerous, dangerous thing, you know, to have to deal with and not be able to say something about it. So send me an email. Let's see what we can do to help, okay? But do not go anywhere. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Um, yeah, so I've been talking about dating my abuser and I told the whole story on my blog. I don't want to bore you with telling you all those stories again, but it was verbal. I, my, my, my boyfriend at the time was saying all kinds of crazy things to me every day and it made me feel so small I lost my confidence, which is crazy. But anyway, go to the blog and read about it. Right now, it's time for Stella's favorite things. Okay, a lot of you know that I love, love houses. You didn't? That's shocking. Okay, fine. You know that I love hair. Okay, fine. <laughs> I love hair, but the people who really know me, they know I love houses. I love real estate and I love interiors. I love decorating a home. It is so important to me. I love it. And that is why I'm doing this here because I love the store. It is called the Exotic Furniture Store in Washington Heights in New York. Yes, that's New York City. Oh, the noise. Yes, that's why I love the city anyway. But one of the pieces that I really like is this. This is awesome. They are different sizes. Put them on your tables, near your TV stand, whatever it is. It's not too in your face. It's just beautiful. It's shiny. It can make your house pop. Some people like to put stuff to show, like flowers and all that, but I like to leave it the way it is. Just put like three or four of them, different sizes, and Trust me, it will change and transform your home. I love it. If you want details about the exotic furniture store, don't worry, it will be in the description box below, okay? That is amazing. But don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Welcome back. Okay, it's time for Dear Diaries. In case you don't know what Dear Diaries is, you know, anytime we do start at the Master Diaries, I keep saying, if you have any questions or anything, send me an email, write me a letter, and I will respond. So I've decided to respond, but I'm not gonna expose you. I'm not saying your full name, but I got a letter from um, a lady called Evie, and she was telling me about a guy that she fell in love with um, back home in Africa. And, you know, he wanted to come to America. He wanted to start a life in America. And the whole idea was he will come to America, work as much as he can, you know, get his documentations right and marry her and bring her over to America. And so she accepted, you know, he went to see her parents and then he needed money for the tickets to go to America and for a hotel. And the girl's parents who believed that in no time she would be able to join him in America, they sold everything they had, gave it to him to come to America. But he came to America, got married to someone else, started working and did different things, but never got in touch with her. She tried to call, send him messages, he shut down his Facebook account, changed his number, changed his address, changed everything. And she's asking, and she's saying, Stella, what do I do? I'm in love with this guy, but I don't understand. And I'm like, girl, move on. Her name is Evie. Evie, move on, he is gone. It is done. Don't worry about the money that has been spent. Just see it as you contributing to his life. But if you think he's going to leave all of that and come back for you, no, he's gone. And, and next time, don't do that. You know, if he's, if he's going, let him go. If he wants to come back for you, that's fine. But do not wait and sit your butt down hoping that he's going to come back because it is crazy out in America. So all of you who feel, oh, he's going to come back for me, you better be careful. Ask questions, be sure of what you're doing. But Evie, life is too short. Move on. Find someone else, find love, live a lovely life, okay? I'm so excited to be back. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. And remember, it's not who people say you are. It's who God says you are. Bye.
Don't forget to like if you really like the video. Comment, I would really love to hear from you. And subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my exciting videos. And please check out my blog on StellaDamasasBlog.com. Thank you so much for watching.